made it back. Good to see you. How's everything? Okay? All right, great. Again, continuing with grammar. We're going to talk about something that will show up on the GED all the time because it's tricky. Uh, Run-on sentences and comma splices. A run-on sentence is two or more independent clauses not connected correctly. In other words, it doesn't have a semicolon, doesn't have a conjunction with a comma, and doesn't have an adverbial connection. Uh, doesn't have an adverbial, um, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a coordinating adverb. So, conjunctive adverb. So we're going to try to fix all these run-on sentences. Let's go to work. Oh, in addition to this, I want you to pay attention to the sentences. I'm going to try to teach you science at the same time I'm teaching you these little run-on sentences and how to fix them. So therefore, not only, don't only pay attention to what I'm saying about the grammar, but also uh, what I'm saying about the science in addition to it. I'm going to quiz you on both. Aren't I fun? Yes, I'm a lot of fun. But this will make your learning go a little bit faster and a little more entertaining, hopefully. Let's get busy. Hydrogen and helium. After 3,000 years, the universe consisted of a huge cloud of hydrogen and helium stars composed of these elements. This is a run-on sentence because there are two standalone independent clauses that run together. Let's see what they are. After 300,000, this will be years, the universe consisted of huge clouds of hydrogen and helium. That's one sentence, or one independent clause. Stars are composed of these elements. Fantastic, but you need something that's going to connect this long sentence, or independent clause, with this sentence. Stars are composed of these elements. Right? Should be a semicolon right there. Stars are formed on billions, stars formed billions of years after the Big Bang. That's one independent clause. They appeared in clouds of hydrogen and helium. There needs to be something here that's going to fix this. In order to do it, you have to have a two-step process. Discover what's wrong, apparently there are two independent clauses, and then add the proper punctuation, semicolon, conjunction, um, conjunctive adverb. That's where the problem is. And here's another way of doing it that I didn't mention. Add a period and have two totally different sentences. Since stars were formed a billion years after the Big Bang, I don't know why I have one there. Period, I'm going to start a new sentence. Yes, I made a mistake. What? Stars were formed a billion years after the Big Bang. Period, I'm going to add a period, I'm going to start a new sentence. Capital T, they appeared in clouds of hydrogen and helium. Okay, so you're putting two sentences together. You're trying. You you have a you problem is they put two sentences together with the wrong punctuation. That's what made a run on. I'm gonna separate those two sentences which is one technique. Put a period at the end of the first independent clause and start the beginning of the second sentence or independent clause with a capital letter and end with a period. This makes this two sentences combined together incorrectly into two sentences that are appropriately apart. Okay, try it yourself. Fix this sentence. Gravity pulls hydrogen cloud together. Apparently there's some kind of problem here, or maybe some kind of problem here. The GED will have a line there telling you there's a problem. The center of the cloud heats up to the point where that nuclear, nuclear fusion begins. Gravity pulls hydrogen cloud together. This is one independent clause. The center of the cloud heats up to the point that nuclear fusion begins. Let's look at some of the choices. Choice number one. This keeps it the same. Together, the center, but no punctuation. Here's some punctuation. Together, period, the center. That may be correct. What do you think? That may be correct? Okay. Number three is gravity pulls out together, comma, the center of the cloud eats up, da, da, da. That comma is a comma splice because it's putting two independent clauses together with a comma. That's incorrect. Capital T, the center. That doesn't make any sense, right? I didn't think so. And capital T, 
the put the together. Uh, I'm not feeling that. I think the only choice is two. What do you think? Two is the right choice. Okay, great. Let's see what the computer says. Da ba ba ba. Absolutely right. Imperial. The put a period at the end of the together and capitalize that T. That separates these two sentences and that's the correct form. Another way to fix what we're on is use a semicolon. The pressure of hydrogen is strong there. It is strong. There is so much pressure that hydrogen turns into helium. These are two independent clauses. The pressure on hydrogen is, is strong. That's one independent clause that can stand by itself. There is so much pressure that hydrogen turns into helium. Again, that's an independent clause of itself. The way to fix it would be to put a semicolon. Bing, there's a semicolon. Now, your semicolon doesn't have to be bright green, but if you have a bright green pen, feel free. But that, makes, that combines two independent clauses. The, in, the pressure on hydrogen is strong. It's one independent clause. There is so much pressure that hydrogen turns into helium. That's another independent clause. Use a semicolon to fix that run-on sentence. More fusion. You try it. Fix this sentence. Hydrogen fusing helium makes lots of heat and light. The GED will have this underlined. That process is called nuclear fusion. Again, you're trying to combine two sentences together, but it's incorrect because there's no punctuation there. No period in capital O. So let's figure out what to do. Number one keeps it the same. Like that, that process. That can't be right because these are two independent clauses and there's no punctuation. Like, they change the word that into the. It doesn't really finish the problem. Pardon my, my stomach growl. I know. I, I, buy my GED. Buy more. I'm starving to death. Or, you can use a semicolon like we did in the example. Hydrogen infusing helium makes lots of heat and light. Semicolon, that process is called nuclear fusion. I think this is the correct way to put these two sentences together. Do you agree with me? Fantastic. Let's look at the other ones just to make sure. Again, they're trying to stick that comma in there. That, again, makes a comma splice. And then they throw some random capitalization in to throw you off. Again, I don't think that's right. I agree with you. I think it's number three. We're still with number three. Use that semicolon. Fantastic. All right, let's see what the computer says. The computer agrees with you. Number three is correct. Use a semicolon. Okay. From fusion to stars. Turn a run of sentence into a complete sentence. There is a balance between fusion pushing out and gravity pushing in. A star is born. Now, here's another way of fixing it. Turning a run-on sentence into a complex, a complex sentence, use a dependent clause, change the first one into a dependent clause, and keep the second one an independent clause. The way they do that is use add the word once and then put a comma. Once there is a balance between fusion pushing out and gravity pushing in, comma, a star is born. That once turns this first clause into a dependent clause. It can't stand by itself. A star is born is still an independent clause, but once you use the word once and use the comma, this makes the correct sentence. Another way of fixing a run-on sentence. Again, use the word once. Go from capital T to a lowercase or small t. Add the comma, and guess what? This is a complete non-run-on sentence. Once there is a balance between fusion pushing out and gravity pushing in, a star is born. Use the comma, capitalize, take this out, all right, and it all works out together. Does that make sense to you? Fantastic. Great. Let's try it one more time. Use a comma in conjunction to fix a run-on sentence. A star burns hydrogen and emits heat and light. Once the hydrogen is all gone, a star begins to die. The star begins, will be an S there, begins to die. 
again, you want to use a comma and the conjunction. You know, the conjunctions are, again, fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. Here's and, the most common one. Put a comma first, then a conjunction. A star burns hydrogen and emits heat and light, comma, and once the hydrogen is gone, the star begins to die. This is tricky, but this is a, the path to do this. Use a conjunctive adverb preceded by a semicolon and comma. We've seen this before. The pressure of large stars collapsing creates other elements such as oxygen, carbon, and iron. That's an independent cause. These heavy elements make planets. We need something there in order to put these two sentences together correctly. In this case, we're going to use the semicolon, the word moreover, and a comma. This format is very common. Semicolon, conjunctive adverb, like moreover, and comma, and then the other sentence together. The pressure of large stars collapsing creates other elements such as oxygen, carbon, and iron. Semicolon, moreover, comma, these, these heavy elements make planets. Okay? So there's a connection between these two. Right? All this is going on. In addition, I need you to know more information. Heavy elements make planets. Again, look at the semicolon. Look at the conjunctive adverb and look at the comma. Let's try it once and we'll wrap this up. Supernova. The deaths of the largest stars cause big explosions called supernova. That's one independent cause. This is where the most dense elements are formed. This is another independent cause. How can we form this correctly? Number one stays the same we know this is not correct, correct? We know this is not correct, right? <laughs> because you can have two independent causes with no punctuation. Number two, they're trying to sneak this comma in, but we know by now this comma, you can't connect two independent causes with a comma. That's called a comma splice. Supernova, uh oh, no period, capital T. That's not going to work. It's still messed up, right? Absolutely right. Oh, right, here's a good one. I think. Number four, in supernova, semicolon that we just learned, accordingly, comma. How does that sound to you? Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me too. I think number four is correct. Again, supernova, no semicolon. We know that's not the right form because you know you, you know you need a semicolon to connect these two independent clauses. I think we go with number four. Number four is okay with you? I knew you're right. Computer says number four is correct. All right, that's it for today. Those are three ways of putting semicolon, putting, uh, fixing one-on-one sentences. One, you can make it into two sentences. Another way is you can use a semicolon, and a third way, a third way is you can use a regular conjunction, and a fourth way is you can use an adverb, a conjunctive adverb like accordingly, similarly. But you must use a semicolon first. Use the, the adverb and then followed with a comma, and that's the correct format. Thank you very much. See you next time.